A very good evening to you and welcome. You're watching Group of Vahini News. Hello there, very good evening indeed. I'm Sean Maskinius. And I'm Ashika Mnudin. First, we take a look at today's headlines. President opens the 10-story new ward complex of the National Hospital. One suspect of the Boston attack killed as a massive police operation gets underway to apprehend another fleeing suspect. Production activities of the Wala Chene paper factory to commence on the 2nd of next month. Arrangements ready for Nicolas Maduro to take oaths as Venezuela's new president. Well, those were the headlines and taking a look at news in detail now. President Mahindra Rajapaksa said that the present government rendered a special service for safeguarding the health of the people. He said that the government took correct decisions to curtail consumption of liquor and cigarettes as well as to control the drug trade. The president made these comments when he declared open the third multi-storied complex of the National Hospital which has been dedicated for the treatment of physical ailment patients. This project was a part of a five-year national health plan under the Ministry of Health. Over 600 million rupees have been spent for the construction work of this 10 story building which has a 432 bed capacity. With the opening of this complex, the bed capacities for physical ailment patients, the number of patients being treated at the National Hospital will be increased from 752 to 1092. In addition to the normal beds, there are four beds in all wards, each for treatment of acute patients. The intensive care unit on the ground floor has a capacity of 10 beds. An additional amount of 50 million rupees have been spent for the procurement of equipment. The president said that the government was able to improve the health sector of the country to a very high level and steps were taken to overcome the shortages existed. 175,000 million rupees have been allocated for the health sector in the year 2013 budget. The president pointed out that an attitudinal changes of the people are required for the improvement and quality of the health service. President Mind the Rajapaksa said that despite spending large amounts for the war, the requirements for the health sector were not neglected and everything which was required for the health sector was provided even during the war period. He said that at certain decisions they were taken fearlessly which other governments would have feared to take. Decisions against the use of liquor and smoking as well as against the trade of drugs and medicine were taken by the minister, ministers fearlessly. They were given support by the government to take these bold decisions. The Seneca Bibile policy which had been dumped into the waste paper basket was revived. We have decided to implement this policy. The president said that the health condition of all people in the country will be improved and the people also should cooperate for this purpose. The Colombo National Hospital is considered as the largest hospital in Asia. Minister Maitri Palacirisena said that under the present government, the health service of this country has been considered as the highest standard health service in the world. Minister Maitri Palacirisena said that the free education and the free health services of this country were widely strengthened during the Mind the era. He said that new buildings, new doctors and other staff as well as modern equipment are being provided to the health sector continuously and it has been expanded uninterruptedly. He said that the health service of the country and its quality service is in the prime position in the region as well as on the international level. The minister said that the health service of this country has been commended by almost all countries in the world. Venerable Murut Thetwayan and the Thero, Ministers H.M. Fauzi, P. Dayaratna and Nimal Siripali De Silva, Deputy Minister Lali Desanayka and Parliamentarian Thilanga Sumati Palo also attended the function. Meanwhile, a huge manhunt is underway in the Boston area in search of one of the two suspects connected with the Boston Marathon bombing. One of the suspects has died in an exchange of fire with police. Police said that the suspects are immigrants from the central Russian Dagestan area.
A heavy exchange of fire between police and the suspects took place last night. The two suspects killed a police officer in the Massachusetts Technical University near Boston City. Subsequently, they hijacked a vehicle and when fleeing the area, a heavy exchange of fire took place between them and police. The first suspect succumbed to his injuries. People across Boston and surrounding suburbs have been asked to stay indoors, keep their doors locked and open it only for police officers who produced IDs. Vehicle traffic was completely stopped in Boston and a curfew is in place for residents. Police have also asked residents to stay away from doors and windows and stay hidden inside houses. The two suspects are brothers of Chechen origin and arrived in the United States about 10 years ago seeking asylum. Police believe that the suspect at large is armed with bombs and other weapons. The two suspects have been identified as 26-year-old Tamerlane Saranev and 19-year-old Zoka Saranev. American security authorities believe that they may be extremist militants with weapons training. The suspects were caught on security cameras leaving bags with bombs as well. Three persons died and more than 117 people were injured from the bomb blast in Boston. Well, in other stories, President Mahinda Rajapaksa has sent a congratulatory message to the new Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The President has stated in his message that Mr. Maduro's victory is a manifestation of the trust and confidence he enjoys among the people of Venezuela. He said that he has no doubt that the wealth of, in, of experience gained from Mr. Maduro's long and distinguished political career will help him steer the Venezuela towards continued prosperity. The President also noted that bilateral ties between Sri Lanka and Venezuela were greatly enhanced during the tenor of the late President Hugo Chavez and he looks forward to working closely with the President Maduro to further strengthen relations between the two countries. Meanwhile, medical specialists state that the highest number of deaths in Sri Lanka are caused due to cardiac disease. Hospital reports point out that around 13 cardiac patients die in Sri Lanka each day. About 65% of patients die each year due to non-communicable diseases. Doctors say that 30% of them die due to cardiac disease. Among them, males amount to 55.7%, while females amount to 43.3%. In low-income earning countries, death toll due to heart ailments has increased to 80%. The director of the Non-Communicable Diseases Unit, specialist Dr. Mrs. Talata Lienege, said that cardiac diseases are mainly caused by smoking, intake of liquor, consumption of unsuitable foods and lack of exercise. The director of the Non-Communicable Diseases Unit, Specialist Doctor, Mrs. Talata Lienege, also said that everyone should refrain from smoking, drinking liquor and should consume a balanced diet and exercise in order to keep the body mass index or BMI between 18.5 to 25. She said that by taking a BMI test at least once in three months can ensure that the health of people is in proper order. Dr. Rebecca Pararaja Singham, who has come from England, has appealed to the people to help her find her mother. She believes that she will be able to find her mother due to the peaceful atmosphere prevailing in the country. Dr. Rebecca Pararaja Singham has been born at the De Soisa Ladies Hospital in Colombo on the 18th of April, 1979. She received treatment for three months at the Lady Ridgeway Hospital in Colombo and later following a court ruling dated 25th June 1979, she was handed over to a couple for adoption. Her parents were Wadi Vale Silvaraja Singham and Violet Leelavati Silvaraja Singham. Dr. Rebecca Pararaja Singham, who arrived in Sri Lanka recently for her 34th birthday, is requesting the media and other people to help her find her mother. She has come to know that at the age of eight years that her parents were living in Sri Lanka. She has studied with firm determination of visiting Sri Lanka one day to find her mother and she is now a scientist. She is working as the chief manager in charge of a European and Asia Pacific region of the AICO Scientific Research Institute in England. She is a mother of three children and feels the greatness of a mother because of this matter. I have been spending many years since a very, very young child 
trying to find my mother. So I'm really appealing um, to anyone in Sri Lanka who can help me, especially the people and the staff at Lady Ridgeway Hospital, the nurses, the doctors, anyone who may know my story, anyone who may be able to help me to help find my mother. I've you know, my parents that took me to England, they were great parents. They did the best for me. They gave me the best of everything. I was educated in the best of universities. Um, I am now a scientist. I'm a senior manager in a clinical research organization. The Cantale Restaurants, which was closed down 26 years, years ago, was reopened after complete renovation. The function in this connection was held this morning under the patronage of the Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa. Due to the damage caused to the Kantali Reservoir on the 17th of April 1977, a part of the rest house was also damaged. With the increase of atrocities by Tiger terrorists, the rest house was completely closed down. The Defence Secretary was instructed to take action to renovate this rest house in line with the Naganihira Udhania projects. The building was renovated with the medi mediation of the Sri Lanka Navy. The rest house, which is located on the Kantale Reservoir Bund, was declared open today, christened Kantale Lake Front Hotel. It is expected that this hotel will attract local and foreign tourists alike. Navy Commander Vice Admiral Jayanath Kolumbage and several others attended the function. Well, the production activities of the Wale Chennai paper factory, which was stalled, will recommence on the 2nd of next month. The production output of the corporation will be increased to 1,000 metric tons by the end of this year. The Wale Chennai paper factory commenced operations in the year 1957. In the year 1972, a board manufacturing machine worth 100 million US dollars was also installed in the factory. The factory generated for employment was over 3,200 persons. During the year 1996, the annual output of the factory increased to 20,000 metric tons. Due to cheap foreign stationery becoming available in the market, the factory was threatened with the possibility of closing down. The factory was closed last December to make repairs to its boilers. The renovation work of the factory commenced operations by the Ministry of State Resources and Enterprise Development. The competent authority of the Violet Chennai paper factory, Mangala Senarat, said there are five trade unions in the factory and all these trade unions are cooperating with him to revive this factory. In the past, there were no trade unions. He said that the factory can be revived 100%. He said without making it a burden to the ministry, the factory commenced operations by, can commence operations by May this year. Mr. Senarat said that this is the largest factory in the eastern province and it could generate several thousands of employment opportunities as well. It will also be a possibility to re-establish a paper production village. Meanwhile, the National Building Research Institution has completed its land research projects in Hangurangketa area. As a result, an area of two and a half acres was demarcated as conservation areas. The Disaster Management Center spent nearly 60 million rupees for this research. Under this project, the road networks of uh, Padiapalla uh, to Walapane and Maturata and Mandaram Nuara were also conserved with the objective of minimizing landslide threats. Security bund grass covers and other methods were used for the conservation activity. In certain areas, land was drilled into about 38 meters to assess their vulnerability. It was found that huge water currents flow under certain road networks. There are nearly 120 families living on the slopes of the road and there are more than 160 buildings as well. When the British constructed the Wallapane Candy Road in 1847, a bridge made of bricks was constructed near the Padia Palalla town. The Hangurangkata project officer of the National Buildings Research Institution, Luxury Indra Tilaka, said that in future construction of any buildings will not be permitted in vulnerable areas. Well, the Ministry of Health has instructed the hospital authorities to dispose electronic wastage of the hospitals in accordance with the government regulations. A special circular was issued in this connection under the instructions of the Minister of Health. Waste of any equipment functioning electronically is considered as e-waste. Although these waste materials can be buried or burnt, it directly affects the health conditions and the environment. 
These materials contain heavy metal and poisonous chemicals. There are many institutions registered in the Central Environment Authority to undertake acceptance of e-waste. The Health Minister the Health Ministry points out that the e-waste should not be considered as materials for dumping but as materials with sales value. The Ministry says that the hospitals and the health institutions should take steps to call for tenders for e-waste material from the institutions that are registered in the Central Environment Authority and should be disposed accordingly. The Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Niyal Jai Singh, said that the Environment and Vocational Health Unit of the Ministry has been entrusted with the responsibility of checking whether the e-waste materials are being disposed as per the Ministry's regulations. The Isi Varuna Teledrama presented by the Drama Unit of Rupa Wahini will be telecast on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. from tomorrow. The teledrama depicts the changes that have taken place in Sri Lankan society as of late. The script of the drama was written by K.B. Herat and it was directed by Bhima Ratna Adhikari. The music was composed by Jainath Varakaguta. The teledrama emphasizes the virtuous qualities that should prevail in society. Sriyanta Mendes, Maureen Chatur Charuni, Uddika Premaratna, Somadasa Surya Rachi, and several other prominent artists contributed to the teledrama. The happiness of life does not depend solely on wealth. The drama is based on a benevolent professor who performs virtuous deeds with the understanding that good deeds done in this life will benefit the next. Hello and a very good evening. Welcome to the Sports News with me, Chamindi Samrasekara. The Foxhall Supercross Motor Vehicle and Motorcycle Contest organized for the 21st time by the SISCO of the Sri Lanka Army and the Motor Vehicle Riders Association will be held at the Athalava tomorrow. 200 local and foreign riders including two leading Indian motor vehicle riders and three motorcycle riders will participate in the event. There will be 12 events of motor vehicle riding and 14 events of motorcycle riding. The motor vehicle riders and motorcycle riders expect tomorrow's contest to be very tough. Motorcycle champion Gayan Sandarwan said that the contest will be a very challenging one and they are getting ready to face it. He said the track will be very dry. Motor vehicle champion Pasindu Piri said that there will be a close contest tomorrow. He said that there will be 22 cars in the SLGT event. Only 12 riders who will get qualified for the race will participate in the race. Motor vehicle champion Rohit Rajpaksa said that it is for the first time he is putting his car for the race. He also said that there is a new setup and he has not participated earlier and this will be a new challenge. The Fox Hill Supercross contest could be viewed live through the iChannel Rupa Vahini from 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. The Carlton race organized by the Sri Lanka Cycle Race Association was held yesterday in conjunction with the Bak Mahasanakalia of Hambantota. The length of the route was 119 kilometers. Priyanta Jayalal of Debaravava Tissa Maharama came first in the race. K.W. Ravindra and R.P. Premalal won the second and third places respectively.